Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to talk about the PubSub API in Salesforce. This has been gone GA in the July release, and this is first of its kind to be offered by Salesforce. That is, it is built on the modern framework of a gRPC API, which is an H which is based out on on the HTTP two protocol. So let's start. So before discussing the PubSub API, let's see what is the Salesforce new event bus architecture. So the old event based architecture was the same infrastructure as of products like Sales Cloud and Service Cloud, uh, while powering the pubs up for all Salesforce clouds. This architecture has been extremely powerful, but since Salesforce has grown and acquired new companies like MuleSoft and Tableau, there was uh, the time had come for a change, and there were some scalability issues. So Salesforce introduced this new bus architecture, event bus architecture. So this new event bus service is basically internal to Salesforce and sits outside of the servers, powering Sales Cloud and Service Cloud. By having an independent runtime, Salesforce can easily scale the service to meet the needs of the customers and entire new clouds. And they can also adopt a microservice architecture for an eventing that enables a stronger focus on the needs of Salesforce clouds and customers. So what is a microservice architecture? So microservice architecture basically allows a large application to be separated into smaller ind independent parts with each parts having its, uh, its own realm of responsibility. To serve a single user request, a microservice based application can call other internal microservices applications. To compose its response. So here are the, these two images which shows the old architecture versus the new event bus architecture of Salesforce. So uh, you can see that earlier this REST API, SOAP API uh, and bulk APIs uh, and the streaming APIs had this, uh, they were together in the same architecture with the Salesforce event bus and this customer integrations and this these were the distinctive distinct Salesforce stacks. So uh, these were the more, this is how they were divided, but with the new event stack, that is a new microservice has been created for the event bus and there Salesforce has introduced this pub sub API. So by this, they can uh, easily meet up the demands or scale, etc. So this is their new in uh, infrastructure and this is internal to Salesforce. So now let's uh, introduce pub sub API. So to make event driven integrations today, customers have uh, different options of publishing. That is, they can use bulk API, SOAP API, REST API. These APIs allow developers to publish events and for subscribing of events, customers can use the streaming API, which allows them to subscribe to any change data capture event, platform event, or any other real time monitoring event. So uh, streaming API is based on the Bayox protocol uh, and uh, for uh, the streaming API implementation, we make a, a custom comedy streaming API client and that is based on the Bayox protocol. But with the new PubSub API, which is a gRPC based API and it is based on the HTTP2 protocol and has all the functionality consolidated into one comprehens uh, comprehensive API. The PubSub API allows users to publish events, subscribe to events, request schema, request topic information all within just one API and it eradicates the need of building out a custom comedy streaming API client which I said was needed if uh, you want uh, the, an external application to subscribe to uh, the platform events or any events that has the origin from Salesforce. The PubSub API has also improved built-in logic for flow control and publish acknowledgements, allowing developer to create more robust application than they could with the streaming API. So here is a small table uh, showing the different tasks and how to accomplish today and how to accomplish with PubSub API. So uh, the task is publish platform events. We can do that with SOAP API, REST API, bulk API. Uh, we can subscribe to change data capture events using streaming API, platform events, uh, real time monitoring events. And uh, the point here is that all these tasks has been comprised and uh, we, we just need a single API that is the PubSub API for all these operations instead of using different APIs, right? So uh, now let's, uh, we, have, we know that uh, PubSub API is a gRPC based API. So let's understand what is uh, this. So gRPC stands for Google's remote procedure calls. So this is a mo modern open source, high performance remote procedure call framework that can run on 
can run in any environment. This is a modern API paradigm apart from REST and GraphQL. So REST we know already and GraphQL I've already made a video on that. So apart from these two paradigms, uh, this, this is a new paradigm that is the gRPC. So with this, a client application can directly call a method on the server application running on a different machine as if it was a local objects. So let's say we have one client and we have one server. So uh, basically what could happen is a client application uh, could directly make a call to the server application and uh, by by that call uh, some logic can be performed on the server side uh, with when the client calls that specific procedure on the server. So the this invocation is called as remote procedure call and uh, Firstly, to uh, authenticate, let's say, like between the client and server. So it is based on the HTTP2. So HTTP2 provides us the bi-directional communication uh, between the client and server. Earlier, we used to use web sockets for that. But with HTTP2, uh, the web sockets have become redundant. And uh, uh, this is a, a Google then uh, use this remote procedure calls for their API and made made this uh, open source framework uh, so what are the advantages of this uh, so we have better performance grpc is about 7 to 10 times faster than rest due to the fact that its payload format is com uh, compressed lightweight byte buffers instead of json so and we have the bidirectional streaming which i said unlike the uh, unary request response paradigm employed by rest and soap grpc allows for client and servers to set up and maintain open bi-directional communication channel between them. This enables both client and server to operate independently, meaning that a client can consume and publish events in any order it wishes. In addition, gRPC preserves the order of messages with the stream. And it is built on HTTP2, which is a new standard that guarantees better performance, increased security as compared to HTTP1. Plus, we have uh, 11 languages support for gRPC. Uh, some of those languages are Java, Python, and Go. And we... so uh, let's see how it works. So we have a gRPC server. Let's say currently it is a C++ server. And we have these two clients. So this is a Ruby client. This is an Android Java based client. And uh, they make a request to the server. Uh, and they get a response. So uh, basically they are using a method that is defined on the server. In the, in the server's proto file, it is defined, this method. And from the, uh, basically they uh, they call that method uh, from the client to the server. And the method name uh, that is defined on the proto file and server knows which method to call. And within, within that method, they return uh, whatever logic that is written back to the client in the response. So uh, Part of gRPC's conceptual difference between REST and SOAP is that it exposes remote procedure calls instead of endpoints. As we know that in REST, uh, we have different endpoints and based on those endpoints, we make the call and get the data. Let's say for YouTube, if we want uh, to get the user detail, uh, the endpoint would be youtube.com slash user. If we want the videos detail, then it would be slash user slash videos. So, but in gRPC, uh, the server has a proto file where the uh, RPCs are defined and the clients call those RPCs instead of endpoints. These RPCs are methods that can be called remotely uh, with specified parameters and return types. The API server implements this interface and runs a gRPC calls ser a server to handle client calls. So the basically the API server is running a, uh, is a run to handle those client calls and then return a response back to the client. So the client has a stub that mirrors the methods available on, a, on the server and all of these methods or RPCs are defined in a proto file which contains all the RPC method parameters and return types specified as protocol buffer messages. As I already told, there is a proto file and that would contain all the methods with their parameters and return types. So this is basically a strongly typed uh, parameters. So we have uh, Salesforce RPCs also defined. So I'll show you. Uh, so uh, you can see these are the uh, RPCs.
you can see these are the RPCs that have been defined by Salesforce uh, and uh, which uh, the client has access to call from their own application. So we have the subscribe, we have the get schema, we have the uh, get topic, we have the publish and we have the publish stream. So now let uh, so these are the schema uh, and uh, the schema is like strongly typed. So basically if whatever schema request we send, uh, so you can see in the parameters, uh, this uh, get schema parameter, we have a schema request. So this schema request uh, will be defined on the, the on the definitions that are already defined by Salesforce. So if the schema request in not is not available on these uh, definitions, then Salesforce will throw an error. So uh, what I mean to say is these are strongly typed and our message should resemble these uh, definitions. And uh, firstly, let, let, let us discuss that Salesforce has provided this PubSub API MuleSoft connector and uh, uh, which we can use to implement the PubSub API and or we can build our own PubSub API client. We'll build our own PubSub API client in this project, uh, which we are, will do next and we'll use Python language uh, for our client side code. So basically the steps we'll do is we'll generate the Python stub classes, we'll build Python client, we'll set up events uh, in our Salesforce org that is uh, CDC or platform events. So currently only CDC uh, and platform events can be subscribed using this PubSub API. Then from our client application, let's say our Python is a client application, we'll subscribe to this channel and then uh, uh will uh, once we'll publish an event from our salesforce org uh we we would see the output being shown in our the python client then we'll publish an event uh, from our client and then we'll see that output in our salesforce org so it, it would be a really interesting uh project so we'll do that in the next video so stay tuned for the next video hope you like this video and thanks everyone for watching this video have a great day